there you have it. You have a 100% complete cataract free CRT. It's now ready for installation into the cabinet. You can look closely. We have a nice seal all the way around the perimeter. Foam tape is bearing load on the surface at every contact point. So we now know we will not be stressing the lens when it's reinstalled into the bezel. So let's put it back into the TV now. And here is the finished product. The finished CRT that is. Ready for chassis installation. We can see closely that obviously there are no signs of cataracts anywhere on the CRT. And to make sure we have proper fit you make sure there's no excessive gapping around the perimeter of the CRT, which we have none. It's an excellent fit. This TV is ready to go. So we'll put the chassis in, and then this will be a completed restoration. And we'll be able to watch this TV like it was meant to be. And now the job is complete. The TV has been reassembled, and we're now ready to test it out. Here's our control panel on this. Black in the city tonight. Chicago's Orange Street Bureau says 3,000 trees were damaged. Those same storms producing three tornadoes touching down in suburban Bolingbrook, Bloomingdale, and in Griffith, Indiana, where WGN's Lourdes Forte is live tonight. Lourdes. And Griffith, Indiana perhaps got it the worst. Take a look at this house behind me because it really says a lot about what happened out here. That up there, that used to be a bedroom. Down here is some of the debris that they've collected and piled up throughout the day today. Sadly, this is not the only home in this condition out here. On 37th Avenue in Griffith, the street sign was about the only thing that made it. Oh, the whole thing is shaking. And the windows are blowing and the glass is all over and they're just running. To get the color back. saturation. The house on this block was rattled. The entire roofs are gone, fallen trees cover sidewalks, and debris is piling up fast. From Skycam 9, you can see the extent of the damage in the town of 17,000. But nothing like this has ever come through before. You just take it for granted. The hills could barely get in their home after returning from vacation this morning. Everything is soaking wet. There's insulation and wet furniture and beams and this part of the roof in the living room. The other is in the backyard. About 50 miles northwest of Griffith in Bolingbrook, last night's powerful storms left their mark. Here's a look at some of their damage. Entire roofs are torn off and trees are blocking roadways. In Bloomingdale, emergency crews responded to more than 70 calls last night. The roof on this massive warehouse collapsed and somehow a mother and her two kids managed to get out of this apartment without a scratch. Basically, her kids were like in the kitchen and the bedroom, and they weren't there, but 10 minutes prior to that, she said they were in there by the TV, so that could have hurt them. In Chicago, yeah, take the, the look at the damage was on the northwest side. Nearly 3,000 trees came down, including the one that toppled over on Anthony Glock's home. And I could lick this tree on, on the roof. And it just stayed there, and it's something that you only think that happens in other areas, but never here. Well, there is a lot of damage everywhere. Only one death reported, and that happened to be in Michigan City, Indiana. We were told a tree fell on a car 
and killed a 23-year-old driver. Reporting live in Griffith, Indiana tonight, Lawrence Duarte, WGN News. Lawrence, thank you. And isn't it ironic, all that electricity in the sky last night, so many people tonight without power. We're talking thousands and thousands of Chicagoans in the dark tonight, and Tom Negevin's on that story. Tom, how fast is it getting fixed? It's getting fixed fast, but uh, not fast enough for a lot of folks, especially folks in this neighborhood, talking about people in the dark, neighborhoods in the dark. I'm in one such neighborhood right now around uh, uh, Whipley and... and uh, Pardon me. Uh, we have uh, some of Chicago's finest here keeping the uh, street closed because we have uh, a wire down. We have good news, reinforcements. Some video shot just a short time ago. Now these are crews from ComEd and ComEd contractors, but also contractors from out of state. Pico from Pennsylvania, crews from Michigan responding to a call for help from ComEd and responding extremely quickly. Hopefully quickly enough to get the lights back on for folks around these parts. About 100,000 people preparing for another night without power. The generators are all that's keeping life bearable at the Kapinski home on Chicago's far northwest side. They're running not one, but two. It's running the refrigerator, a dehumidifier, and a fan. It's expensive power. It runs on gas, but it also keeps the food from going bad while they wait for ComEd to come to the rescue. I hope they come out soon. I haven't seen one truck come by yet, though, so we'll see. Not everyone sees them as soon as they'd like, but ComEd crews are covering a lot of ground. We're trying to get everybody back on as quick as possible. It's hot out. 500 crews from the power utility and its contractors are working 16-hour shifts side-by-side side with city workers clearing away trees that are down and putting power lines back up. Wires down, which is always our first priority because many of those wires are live, so it's important that we address those first. High winds cause a lot of damage. Um, a lot of trees come down over lines, and that takes a while to clear. You don't have to remind folks who spent a hot August day without air conditioning, doing their best to stay cool any way they can. Hot days and no power. You can't go wrong with it with the fall. Yeah, all kinds of activity in some of these neighborhoods. Pardon my distraction, all kinds of activity in some of these neighborhoods. A lot of folks are out in the street as they can't be in their homes right now. It's too hot. And not everyone, like our friend Bob, has a pool to cool off in, as I was mentioning. I got you, dude. Okay, play ready. Let's go! Mein Name ist André Schmott. Ich bin 27 Jahre alt. Ich habe bei der Bundeswehr eine Ausbildung zum Reserveoffizier gemacht. Die hat zwei Jahre gedauert. Ich habe dort, äh, ja, war dort als Korten und als Zugführer eingeteilt. These men are all experienced soldiers who have come to Italy as part of a war game. They'll defend the saucer from a squad of Canadian and American infantry who will try and overrun it. Well new. From the air to the roads, this storm left its mark. A huge sinkhole near 83rd Mackinac. Heavy rain opened up the street in this south side neighborhood. City crews were out today working on it. Check out the scene as the storm rolled through Wrigley Field last night. Video taken by fans of the area being evacuated. But the violent storm wasn't enough to stop Elvis from having a little fun right there until security did stop the fun. After two rain delays, the game was eventually called in the eighth inning. Yes, you know, Cubs lost. Uh, the whole different picture today, though, Cubs won. Skies are clear. Tom Skilling tells us that uh, it's going to stay away for a while, huh?
Oh, that's, uh, that's for sure. The pattern is changing about as dramatically as it changes this time of the year, bringing air in from Canada. And that shuts down on what you see going on, or at least starting to go on, earlier this evening down in the southern suburbs, the reformation of other thunderstorms. Fact is, though, we're kind of squashing that hot, humid air with all of its lightning and lightning-bearing thunderstorms down south. These things tower at this hour to 52,000 feet in central Illinois. But, you know, we haven't paid a lot of attention to is the rain these storms produce. There was a bullet over over six inches on the Valparaiso area yesterday. And we want to thank uh, so many of you because we have had some wonderful photos.